Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Elden Ring and Night Rain. I'm going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Radeon and Nvidia parameter and at the end we're going to go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X3D or the 7950X3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's 4 gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're going to struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also you can change it on Windows or your Radian driver if you have a Radian car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. This is pretty much it for the NVIDIA parameter. Now let's go to the Radeon one. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. 
After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver and also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. Hey, just a quick break. If you want cheap games, you should check out Instant Gaming. I was on their site earlier and I saw that Clara Obscure Expedition 33 is on sale right now, way cheaper than normal. They have games for PC, PlayStation, Xbox and more. And don't worry, it's not a shady website. The games come from real official reseller. Their Trustpilot rating is great and they have a support open 24-7. You can also look at the uh, trending section, bestseller and pre-order section. Uh, there's always something new there. The link is in the description. Now let's get back to the video. So now inside of the game. So first of all, uh, the game is locked at 60 FPS. I went to the uh, config file and I didn't find anything that you can unlock your FPS. Probably some people will release some mode in the future. Also, I want to mention no upscaling technique. So no DLSS, no FSR available in this game. So we're going to start with the first one, screen mode. Uh, this one really important to play full screen, uh, better FPS and also less input lag. I recommend also to play native with your resolution. In my case, it was 1440p. And this activate the auto detect best rendering setting because we want to use the advanced one. So let's go to the advanced one. I'm going to show you which parameter which will provide you the most of your FPS and also to keep a decent image quality. So first of all, with texture quality, if you have 8 gig and more of VRAM, go maximum. 6 gig high, 4 gig medium, less than 4 gig, go with low. 
Anti-L is in quality. Normally, I'm a, not a big fan of it. Uh, I feel like the game is too blurry. But in this game, a lot of noise when you're using off or even low. So my recommendation is go with high. You're going to lose 3% in your FPS. But honestly, your image will smooth out a lot. Uh, and you don't have the LSS and FSR to fix that. So definitely here, go with high. And in conclusion, I recommend to go with medium. Uh, less than medium, the game looks flat. So my recommendation is go with medium and you're going to get a nice 4% boost. I always deactivate depth of field and motion blur to have better visibility and don't have any blurriness when I'm playing the game. Uh, shadow quality, this one I recommend to go with low. A huge improvement over there. It's like 8% versus maximum. So definitely go with low. Lighting quality, go with medium, 1% different between low and medium, so it's not worth it to go with low. And uh, after that, you're going to lose 2 to 3% for each bracket, so definitely use medium for this one. Effect quality, go with low. Um, it will really help to stabilize your FPS, uh, causing a lot. You have a lot of random drop in this game with your FPS uh, because of effect and also reflection. So definitely use low and low for reflection. Volumetric lighting quality, I recommend to go medium. Uh, at low, the game looks very flat. And also, when you go higher than that, honestly, it's like 3 to 4% uh, the FPS that you're going to lose. So, medium is a good balance. Water surface quality, this one, run this one at low. Shader quality, uh, you have three different options over there. Run high, not a huge impact on your FPS, and it will be better for your image quality. Global illumination, I recommend to go with medium. Don't go lower than that, except if you're really limited with your computer, um, go with low, but your game will look very flat without it. The last one is grass. You have three different brackets, uh, medium, high, and maximum. I recommend to go with high. It's a good compromise, not a huge impact on your FPS, and you will keep a decent image quality for your grass. So this is pretty much it, guys, for Elden Ring and Night Rain. If you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.